Following my recent interview with Sandy Monroe, conducted in Florida at their TeslaCon, there were a lot of comments and questions uh, that needed to be addressed, so let's go ahead and do that today. I'm Brian. Welcome uh, to My Tesla Weekend. So I had this great opportunity, did not have much time. Uh, he's a very busy man and it was a very busy event. Uh, so I went rapid fire, got some kudos for that. The questions were well received in the comments. So thank you all for that. But let's address some of them because there are some really good ones that came in. I might have missed the Cybertruck needs two big gigapresses, but there's only one en route to the factory. Will the Cybertruck be made with the front made of welded steel parts when starting production? The Model Y did that. The Model 3 still uses a stamped front end rather than cast. Will the Cybertruck follow that route? Well, the short answer is no. Mm, they can use the one 9,000 ton press to make both the front and rear castings. Make a thousand of one, swap out the die, a thousand of the other. It's not a great solution, but for the short term, it's fine. They will be able to produce far more, even with the downtime, than an early ramp would support, and it's likely the second Gigapress would arrive mid-year, around the time they're going into initial production, to say nothing of the ramp at the end of the year. I also asked if they could use a smaller casting, maybe a 6,000 ton, which they already have. And Sandy said, nope, the dimension means you would need at least an 8,000 ton press, but he doesn't believe, and I don't believe, they would get an 8 and a 9. They just get a pair of 9, so they've got redundancy. So, no. Question, idea. If you were designing the low-cost Tesla, what would be some of the design parameters that would make it low-cost? Now, I did not have a chance to ask Sandy this, which is why it was recommended. Thank you, Hiking Lang. Uh, I would say that, based on what I've watched of his videos and what I've, what I've talked to him about, the answer is something like the Cybertruck. Cast front end, cast back end, structural battery pack, slap the top on in the easiest form possible, if you can cast the B pillars and other structural elements, that would make tolerances better and reduce on robots. But in any case, all of that would make the car quicker, cheaper, and easier to build. And then just by making it smaller, now you've got a smaller battery that can do the same job. You've got less atoms, and atoms cost money. And then that has a cascading effect where your brakes get cheaper, your wheels get cheaper, your tires get cheaper, and that reduces the weight even more, that reduces even more atoms, that gets even more range. If they could make a cyber coupe, that would be a low-cost vehicle for sure. But we got to get what's on our plate kind of addressed first. The trailer question. So I had asked Sandy, uh, based on many comments in the past, could you put batteries in the trailer? And for that matter, could you put uh, motors back there? to use as regenerative braking or even additional power and uh, traction. And it seems he may have misunderstood my question, thinking I was trying to create a per perpetual motion machine. If towing a trailer to achieve a task, an additional battery in the trailer would just add range. Even if it's a very small trailer with just a 300 pound battery, that would increase range. And there are variations on this. So, Let's get to this question. You could put an electric motor that says, weighs, say, 38 kilograms on the trailer for traction control and maybe not even add batteries. Yeah, you could put just a small regen motor back there. But now you've got to deal with cabling, with very high voltage cabling to connect back to the vehicle. You've got to add all the electronics and hardware on the vehicle to handle the cable. It becomes fiddly and expensive. And trailering is going to remain a niche application, a niche application, if you want to harass me in the comments about it. Uh, they, the amount of added engineering and complication for a small fraction of buyers to get a small benefit doesn't seem like something that would be cost effective on an early run vehicle. Now, if we're talking two, three generations down the road, maybe. But also by then, batteries will have improved, presumably. So I don't think that necessarily would bring as much benefit as you'd hope. I still think the battery pack with a small motor is a good idea for those who can afford it. 
to be able to dry camp, run the AC, help maneuver the trailer while not hooked up, top off both packs in an RV park, and use the trailer's pack to power your house during a power cut while driving your car somewhere else. Pluses and minuses, but it's enticing. Well, the big minus is cost. You could make this work. You absolutely could, but it would be expensive. And at what price point can you sell enough of them to justify the engineering and tooling to actually build it? Do you do a small battery? Do you do a big battery? Can people handle that much extra weight? It is pluses and minuses, but the big one being it's a lot of work. And especially if you're going to pull up to a charger and you've got two batteries to fill, it's getting, it's getting to be a bit of work. It's adding extra steps. You could, well, you could balance it with a cable. Fiddly. It's a lot more work. So if you had a camper that also had a battery pack and motors, it would help with the highway range, uh, but that would add a lot of cost. Yeah. And if you had a trailer with batteries, uh, you'd be adding a lot of aero drag. Not as much worth it. So I think that's what Sandy was talking about. But what if the, uh, the trailer deck was a structural battery pack? It would all be lighter. So it wouldn't. That wouldn't work. Cars are designed to withstand outrageous impacts. Trailers are not. You're not supposed to have passengers in a trailer while it's in motion because they're very flimsy. They're very lightweight. So just looking at what a trailer's structure looks like, it is very lightweight. Even when you get up to the big uh, giant ones like, like this guy, that is for a very big trailer. And if you were to try and make these elements structural, the battery pack would be three times the size of the one in the car. So it would be ginormous or not a structural battery pack. So the structural part doesn't really help as much as you might think, as much as you might want it to. So that part doesn't really help. I love the interview, Brian, but when it comes to the electric trailer, I think people are alluding to the e-airstream. They said it will provide its own propulsion to move it, and the vehicle would just be there to guide it. Speed dependent on the tongue sensor. So in that aspect, there would be no cancellation, correct? Yes. Airstream is working on it. They have a concept, not even a prototype, a concept for just that. It would have batteries in it. I didn't zoom in enough because you can go read it yourself. It's interesting. But they would add batteries that could handle the trailer. This is exactly what people are asking about. But the cost is going to is going to be the issue. Because you have the full cost of a normal trailer, plus all this extra stuff, plus all the engineering that goes into it. Engineering a trailer is trivial compared to engineering a drivetrain. And now we've got a drivetrain that needs to work with other vehicles, that needs to work with a variety of other vehicles, that needs to... It just becomes... It just becomes really complicated in a really short time. So I'm doing these uh, responses to comment videos because I'm going to be on the road this week traveling to Los Angeles uh, for the LA Auto Show and also the opening of the Tesla exhibit at the Peterson Museum on Saturday. So I am trying to get some of these done so that you still got some good stuff to watch while I'm out gathering even more good stuff. And I'm able to do that because of the good graces of my Patreons who get early access, a bonus content, an ad-free experience, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, also this week there will be a whole video about how these AI images are generated. They're kind of fun. I just thought I'd put that one up. The, key, the prompt on that one was, Spaceship on Mars next to a human colony. Dramatic, bold, lightning. Uh, 8K resolution, concept art, etc. It's all going to be in that video. It may even already be out. I'm not sure. So, with that said, you know, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, stay tuned. Stay juicy. Can't wait to hear from you clever robots after the road trip is done. And for the rest of you, you know, subscribe, like, leave a comment. Do all that good stuff. <sighs> and I will be back in uh, another installment of The Sandy Thing, addressing comments made about Aptera, about Nicola, and about Lucid. Uh, and about, well, I don't know if there's any lucid questions, but also about Arkimoto. Those were questions that came up in the comments that are worthy of being addressed.
So thank you guys for hanging out, and I will talk to you soon.